Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and creative homes. In today's video, we're traveling to Maine to meet one couple that is living a dream life of having a tiny house on their very own farm. As you can imagine, owning and running a farm is a lot of hard work, so it's really nice that when they come home at night, they're coming home to a space that's low maintenance, but still super cozy inside. If you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new video. But right now, let's jump right in and take a tour. I'm Erin. I'm David. We own Tiny Acres Farm and this tiny house. The original idea to build a tiny house was kind of just a whim of mine. Just one night binging YouTube, I went down the rabbit hole of tiny houses. I designed a foam model of my house, which is sitting up over there, and that was the two-scale representation of what we're sitting in now. I asked my mom for a small loan to make it happen, and she said yes. Over the past eight, nine years, I've paid off the tiny house. It's been a great journey. I've been living in it much longer than I thought I was originally going to. I built the tiny house shell in a matter of about six months. It took me another about five to six months to finish the interior, so all in about a year. I brought local contractors in my community over to double check as I was building it. The original tiny house cost 25,000 and then there's about another 5,000 added in over the past eight, nine years. As with most homes and home ownership, it's, you're never done building once you start. <laughs> all in, this endeavor has been about $30,000. I originally built the tiny house when I was 20. I built it in Vermont and towed it all the way across country to Colorado, lived in that for a while when Aaron moved into the house about five years ago. We are here on Tiny Acres Farm. We are an organic market garden that also grows mushrooms. I've been growing mushrooms since high school for the past 10 years, so it's always been a big hobby of mine. One thing led to another, and our hobbies and interests became our business. We were given the opportunity to lease land from my parents. That made farm access a lot easier for us. We were able to park here on the property. The house is situated in the woods, so we're tucked back. It keeps us nice and cool in the summertime. We are right next to our mushroom woodlot, which was by design. Mushrooms grow extremely quick. We always think of it as like our own little hobbit shire, just with <laughs> mushrooms growing and moss and everything. This is the outside of the tiny house. We're about 13.4 high, just under 13.6. We have eight feet wide, 20 foot long. It's built on an Iron Eagle trailer. One of my favorite parts is just the aesthetic of this wall of windows. It looks like a seacoast shanty. <laughs> The Cedar Shakes was a must have for me. Just really love this New England style. I grew up with it, so it feels homey, very nostalgic. And I think it turned out really well and it's held up. This is going on nine years. We oil a cedar every other year and paint the trim as well. And that's pretty much the only maintenance that we have to do. And luckily it's not that much. I think it took me two and a half, if not three months to shake the whole thing. And I built it in about seven months. This big window here, as well as the big window on the back of the house are both reclaimed windows. Uh, I built the house in Vermont, and so I was able to find these two big windows uh, at a salvage place. They had previously gone through a fire, but other than that, the window was fine. I did choose to go with vinyl windows on the rest of the house, knowing that these windows are not going to be as efficient as the other ones. Couldn't be happier. This, uh, this massive window, both sides, really lets a lot of light in. Feels really, really open on the inside. So when I was designing the house, it was really important for me to have as much space on the inside. And part of achieving that space on the inside was basically bolting everything I could. So instead of choosing to have my loft on one side or having two lofts as a traditional tiny house would have, I decided to just vault the bathroom and vault the kitchen all the way up, maximizing the inside space and put the loft up here in the 13.6 kind of living atrium area.
So this is kind of the main big room of our tiny house. It's our living room and our kitchen. Kitchen's one of our favorite part of our tiny house. It's pretty big, takes up about a third of it. We cook all the time, we grow all of our veggies, and so we utilize this all the time. We love having our pans available. This stove I got out of a camp in Colorado. Redid the whole inside, this thing's a beast. So one of our favorite things, I worked in kitchens for a really, really long time, and one of our main points was having a really good triangle. It's access to your stove, your fridge, and your sink all at one time. So I don't have to move, I can stand in one spot and cook. Not so much a two-person kitchen, but for one person you can cook a whole meal really easily. So as we come over to this side of the house, this is our living room. It's also kind of a guest bedroom. Our couch is very multi-use. It's our fermentation station. We do a bunch of kombucha. We do a lot of canning. All of our preserves go in there. The other side has all of our electrical components, our 30 amp hookup. Previously, it held all of our solar system equipment when the whole house was off-grid. Now the farm is off-grid, so we pull our solar from the farm. Also, there's a subwoofer in it, so it's really cool. Just watch a movie and the whole thing shakes. So this over here is a really fun part of our tiny house. We have two cats, one's inside only and one is outdoor, but she comes in at night. I insisted when we brought cats in the house that I did not want to see the litter box. So our solution was to have a little side table for our couch and inside there's a little litter box. We're able to clean it out and all the litter is contained, all the smell is contained and the cats love it. Over here on the front wall of the house, this is our window wall, kind of a passive uh, solar wall, heats it up in the winter time. Um, we can also open up most of these in the summer and let all that nice cold breeze in in the afternoon. This is also my desk. When I was a student, I worked here a lot. Now that we run our business, we run our business off of this thing. This is our laugh ladder that comes down too. One of my favorite parts is you can always swing it up out of the way and then you have this big, huge window to just look through and enjoy what's going on outside. We really love this part of the house. Really makes it feel a lot more open than having it just closed off with a stairway. And of course, love to relax with some movies and TV, so that's able to swing out of the way and swing in if we need it. We have a queen size bed up there. We have a skylight. All four windows go across. Sleeping up there, it's not too claustrophobic at all. It actually feels like you're sleeping outside, but nice and cozy. You can close everything up in the winter time. So over here at this side of the house is our bathroom. I insisted when I built the house to have a full bathroom. I wanted a walk-in shower, I wanted a toilet, I wanted a place to put my clothes. The only place that you can actually close off and get some privacy. My favorite part is the shower. As farmers, you really need to clean off at the end of the day, so having a nice large shower, definitely a plus must have for me. We have a composting separating toilet. Solids go in a bucket, liquids go in the gray. So let's go look at the mushroom woodlot and the market garden. So here is the mushroom woodlot. This is where we do all of our seasonal outdoor organic cultivated mushrooms. Primarily we do shiitakes grown out of logs with the crib stacks. That's what we call those kind of crisscross Lincoln log stacks. It takes about a year for the mushroom to actually grow out into the log. We have about 1,200 shiitake logs all in um, production. We primarily grow in maple, birch, and oaks, and beeches. Um, those are the main woods that we use. We have about 12 different varieties of shiitake that we grow. These are all logs that we inoculated this past winter. It's pretty labor intensive up front, but it's something that you can continuously harvest from and reap the rewards and benefits from for years to come. These logs will be in production for about five to seven years for the most part. We also fruit oyster mushrooms out of straw, which we grow in a naturalized hut that we supplement with what we call forest fog. It just retains the moisture for the mushrooms a little bit and they absolutely love it. These are our oyster mushroom buckets. We pasteurize straw and layer it inside the bucket with inoculated grain spawn. It takes about two to three weeks for a bucket to fully colonize. The fruiting body is actually um, the mushroom that you eat. So that's what we harvest and that's what we sell and eat ourselves because they're delicious.
So we're here in one of our greenhouse growing spaces. Right now we have cucurbits in here, so cucumbers, some squashes. We also do some Asian long beans and wing beans. So we have about a quarter acre under cover, meaning we have three different high tunnel greenhouses similar to this one. We grow mostly solanaceous crops like eggplant, tomatoes, cucumbers in those in the summertime. In the shoulder seasons, in the spring and the fall, we usually do crops that need a little bit more protection from cool weather. We have about an acre and a half of field growing space and then around a half acre in the mushroom woodlot. It's really magical being able to walk out your front door with a cup of coffee in the morning, take a stroll through the mushroom wood lot, see how things are progressing, and enjoy a good morning sunrise in the garden. When we first had the concept of moving out here and creating our farm, we knew that we were gonna be incubating a business. We had the full intentions of building this business to move out and to grow, not only grow as a business, but grow as a family and as individuals ourselves. So we're really excited to be able to now have the opportunity to have a new property that we're gonna be moving on to with a lot more acreage, a lot better organic matter, and just being able to really build our dream that we've started here and do it um, bigger and better and be able to touch more people with it. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.